Viewer discretion is advised. In the pages of British true crime history lives the infamous Catherine Hayes. Her life and gruesome deeds as a poisoner have inspired countless ballads and fascinated many. We're here for the gritty, unvarnished details of her horrifying end, a tale marked not just by murder, but by the macabre poetry of her fiery final moments burning at the stake. Catherine was married to John Hayes, and the couple ran a shop in London. John was a successful pawnbroker, and the couple had several children. One of those adult children is reported by some as helping with the murder, but more than complicity, salacious rumors and dark whispers shocked and captivated 18th century England. The most sordid of these was the claim of an incestuous relationship between Harriet and her own son, a scandalous accusation that only heightened the infamy of her already gruesome deeds. Catherine Hayes, along with two accomplices, Thomas Wood and Thomas Billings, she was alleged to be having affairs with, plotted her husband's murder. Billings is the one said to be her biological son. The trio challenged Catherine's husband, John, to a drinking game one night. Money down on the man who could drink the most. The challenge was accepted. On March 1, 1726, the three men went out drinking with the aim of getting John as inebriated as possible. Their real intentions were sinister, make him easier to kill. When they arrived home, a heavily intoxicated John Hayes went to bed. As soon as he was snoring loudly, Thomas Billings entered the bedroom and struck John on the head with an ax. It didn't kill him, but it hurt a lot. John's cries were heard by a neighbor, Mrs. Springate, who rented a room upstairs. When she asked about the disturbance, Catherine Hayes told her they were just having a party and had gotten a bit rowdy. Thomas Wood finished what Thomas Billings had started. He struck fatal blows to John with the ax. To conceal their crime, the treacherous trio chopped off the head, wrapped it in cloth, and threw it in the river. They dismembered the rest of the body and dumped it in a pond near Mary Leebone Fields. When the head washed up in Westminster, it was not immediately identified. Photography didn't exist. And so, to help identify who the head belonged to, it was placed on a pole in St. Margaret's churchyard. This resulted in it being identified as John Hayes. It was then placed in a jar of gin to preserve it. He had two axe wounds to his skull and lacerations on his face. A group of three was quickly suspected, faced arrest and trial. This is usually where I dive into the gritty details of the investigation, the murder trial, and the gory details of how the victim met their end. Wood and Billings were sentenced to hang for murder. Catherine was sentenced to burn at the stake. Other true crime YouTubers have and can worry about the other details of this historic murder case. We're here for the dreadful details of Catherine's burning alive. On May 9, 1726, at Tyburn, a historic site of executions, a halter was placed around Catherine's neck and she was tied to a stake. Burning was reserved for particularly heinous crimes, often symbolizing the eradication of evil. Practically speaking, by the 18th century, the custom was to strangle to death the condemned person before burning them. Practice was meant to alleviate the intense suffering associated with being burned alive. Strangulation was to be manually facilitated by the executioner. In Catherine's case, reports indicate that he botched it, lighting the fire early, which unexpectedly reached his hands and the rope he was strangling Catherine with. She came to feeling every lick of flame that surrounded her. Let's zoom in a bit on how burning at the stake can harm the body. Burning alive causes severe and excruciating harm to the body through multiple mechanisms. The intense heat and flames immediately cause extreme pain by activating nerve endings in the skin. First degree and second degree burns affect the outer layers of the skin, causing redness, blistering, and severe pain. As exposure continues, the burns penetrate deeper, destroying all layers of the skin, and damaging underlying tissues, including muscles and eventually bones. Skin and flesh start to char, which can reduce pain slightly as nerve endings are destroyed. 
but this occurs only after excruciating pain has already been experienced. The intense heat causes rapid dehydration as fluids are lost through damaged skin and evaporation. Breathing in hot air and smoke damages the respiratory tract, leading to inflammation, swelling, and potentially the closing off of the airways. Inhalation of smoke and toxic gases can cause poisoning, eventual unconsciousness, and respiratory failure. Cumulative effects of fluid loss and severe burns lead to multi-organ dysfunction and failure. Heart struggles to maintain circulation due to low blood volume and high metabolic demands from damaged tissues. Death typically occurs due to a combination of respiratory failure, hypovolemic shock, and multi-organ failure. The exact timing depends on the extent of the burns and the individual's overall health. Burning alive inflicts catastrophic damage through intense heat and flame exposure, leading to severe pain, extensive tissue destruction, fluid loss, respiratory damage, and systemic shock. The process is excruciating and results in a cascade of lethal symptoms. The manner in which a person is exposed to flames, such as being immobilized and burned at the stake, differs significantly from scenarios like house fires or arson, where smoke inhalation and toxicity are often the primary concerns. When a person is immobilized, they are in continuous and direct contact with flames, leading to rapid and severe tissue damage. The effects of severe burns and heat damage occur almost immediately, leading to a quick progression to third-degree burns. The initial stages involve excruciating pain due to intact nerve endings in the skin being stimulated by the intense heat. As Catherine writhed in the flames that consumed her and screamed in agony, someone in the crowd finally took pity on her. They knocked her dead or unconscious with a large board that they threw at her head. It took hours for her body to be fully consumed by the flames.